For months, I kicked around the idea of creating a Kickstarter to keep me in school, but settled on posting a whiny Facebook status about how badly I needed cash. I added a line at the bottom of my post about how if anyone transferred money to me over Venmo, I'd do whatever they requested in the what's it for section to feel like I've actually earned it. It was meant to be a funny joke, haha, but my friends actually took me up on the offer. My girlfriends mostly made requests for me to remember to smile or to compliment them or tell them my best joke. Cutie stuff, you know. Excuses to give me a dollar or two or five. And then there were the fuckboys that asked for nudes, and I provided. I didn't care how many boys saw my boobs, I needed the money to get myself through college, to catch up on rent, to stock the cabinet so it's something more filling than ramen noodles. I'd only made about 50 bucks from the whole thing, until I received a notification for $500 that made me choke on my homemade coffee. I didn't recognize the name of the guy at all. Morgan Alexander. I figured I must have knew him, though. He must have seen my Facebook status. How else would he know what I was up to? He sent me a request and everything, asking me to take a series of provocative photos with a knife and send them to a specific email address, morganalexander at gmail.com. So I obliged. I stuffed myself into a lacy blue bra and posed with the knife resting against my cheek, between my teeth, over my neck. I figured this guy was just into some sort of fetish, like bondage, BDSM, masochistic shit. For 500 bucks, I really didn't give a damn. And a few days later, when the same guy sent over a thousand dollars for me to email him again, I didn't give a damn. Even though he wanted a video this time. Even though he wanted to watch me draw a heart on the wall in my own blood. I wish I could say I hesitated. That I had enough dignity to call the idea crazy. But a grand almost covered my rent for the month. I wanted to shut up my landlord. Save myself from another eviction. And honestly... I wanted to make the stranger happy to see if he'd send even more money in the future. I wanted to test my luck. So I propped my phone up against the counter and pressed record. I stood in front of its camera with the same knife I'd used in my photo shoot. I forced a smile as I rested the blade against my palm, sliced the skin open, and dipped my finger into the ooze. Then I scribbled a heart onto the wall as big as I could without having to draw more blood. After I finished recording, I bandaged up my hand, tried to wipe away the design, but the red lines turned into red smudges. No amount of water or bleach removed the stain, so I just ended up covering it with a picture frame and forgetting all about it. Except every so often, I would try to grab a water bottle or a broom and my hand would sting, reminding me of what I'd done. But I didn't feel ashamed, guilty, embarrassed. I felt proud. Like I'd finally figured out a way to beat the system to survive as a 20-something. A week went by without any contact from Morgan Alexander. And then a notification popped up onto my screen at 2 in the morning. The alert woke me from a nightmare-fueled sleep, so I squinted my eyes to adjust to the brightness. The number on the screen I swore was wrong. Fifteen hundred dollars. Before I even read the request, I decided I'd do it. Whatever it was, I needed the money, even if I had to. Place a dead animal on the stoop of an address. With a love note attached to it. There was no way in hell I'd hurt a squirrel or a raccoon or even a bird... So I jumped on my bike and rode down to the side of the highway. I almost got ran over twice and 
was cackled three times before I spotted a dead opossum on the side of the road, half in the grass, half on the pavement. I pushed a kickstand into the dirt, got on my knees, and stuffed the roadkill into my backpack that I brought. Another animal must have been picking at it because the stomach came apart in my hands. Guts slid under my nails, first stuck to my bloodied fingers. I felt the urge to vomit, but I swallowed it, pushing the bile back down my throat. I should have brought gloves, tongs, a garbage bag. I should have thought my plan through instead of just bursting into action like a fucking idiot. I promised myself that I would be more careful next time, because I already knew there would be a next time. 2000 dollars I kept rereading that number to see if it would change, but it was solid, unmoving. A two and three zeros. Two thousand dollars. It would take me over two hundred shifts at the movie theater to make that kind of money. But in order to earn it, I had to break into a house. The same house where I'd left a shoebox filled with roadkill and a love note signed with my name. I remembered how shoddy that place had looked when I'd first snuck up into it with that opossum in my arms. Open windows, broken glass doors, rusty handles. Breaking in would be easy in theory, and it's not like I'd do anything once I was inside. I didn't have to steal any money or go through a person's jewelry. All the message said was that I should break in at night, and that was it. And that would be easy. Of course I didn't want to just jump into a sketchy situation like last time. So I played devil's advocate. I kept telling myself there must be some sort of catch, that no one gets a hand in money as easily as this. But... There hadn't been a catch with the other requests. I'd gotten my money, and I'd used it. On rent, on loans, on groceries, I even had some left for some cigarettes. Nothing bad had happened so far. Why would anything bad happen this time? I debated it for hours, listing out the pros and the cons, trying to convince myself that greed was the root of all evil and... Then deciding that wanting enough money to live comfortably was not greedy. That I deserved this man's cash to make up for the low salary I earned at this movie theater. And the free internships I should have gotten paid for over the years. I'd gotten screwed in the past. My bosses, my college, by the government. If I had the opportunity to earn some extra cash, why the hell shouldn't I take it? So I did. I rode my bike down to the address. Hid it behind a row of bushes and snuck toward the open window in the back. I pushed it up just a bit further, enough to squeeze my head and torso through, and then climbed inside. The living room looked like it belonged to any random person with DVDs scattered across the sofa. Phone booth and boondock saints and seven. But the walls... The walls were covered in stalker photos taken from windows and around corners. Most of them were of a pretty blonde in a sundress. Pastels. And then there was me. Me in my pajamas, grabbing my morning coffee, a block away from my apartment. Me in my work uniform, outside of the theater with a cigarette between my fingers. Me in a skin-tight shirt with high heels in my hand, doing a walk of shame back to my room. What the hell was this? Before I had a chance to put two and two together, I felt my phone vibrate. Another notification. This time, for $5,000. All I had to do was kill a person in this house. I should have bolted for that door back to my apartment, deleted my Venmo app. 
after sending the remaining money back. But I had my knife in my pocket. The one from the photographs. The one from the video. I brought it just in case. Or maybe I knew I would need it. Maybe I wasn't as shocked as I pretended to be. And maybe, maybe, murdering this stranger wouldn't be such a bad thing. They had pictures of me, of multiple girls. They could be a rapist, a pedophile, a killer themselves. So wouldn't offing them be doing the world a favor? Wouldn't it be a good thing? Or, or maybe I was just justifying it for my own selfish reasons. I couldn't kill a human. I couldn't even kill an animal. No, no, I wouldn't do it. It was out of the question. But the second I heard a voice, the knife in my hand, pointed in the direction of the sound. It wasn't for protection. I was ready to do it. My mind might not have been, but my body was ready to fucking do it. Until I saw a gun aimed at my chest. You would do anything for money. The man with the pistol said, stepping closer with each word. It's disgusting. You are going to kill an innocent person. That must have been him, Morgan Alexander. He was the guy that had been feeding me money. He had asked me to break into his own home. I hope you understand, he said, swiping my knife and letting it clatter to the ground. I can kill you and say it was in self-defense. I can claim that you broke into my house after sending me inappropriate pictures and leaving a dead rodent at my door with a note declaring your love. I'm confused, I said, straining to keep my voice from cracking. Uh, are, are you going to frame me or shoot me? I'm not going to shoot you. I'm not a killer. I'm just a man trying to restore the good in this world and extract the bad. You can have the money back. I spent some of it already, but you can have the rest. I'll pay you back if you give me a little... It's not about the money for me. It's about the money for you. That's the problem. People like you are the problem. Beg him? Blackmail him? Hit him? Which move was the right move? What could I do to convince him to let me go? He was twice my size, three times my weight, so attacking him wasn't going to work. Bribing him wouldn't work. All that I knew I could do was talk. Talk my way out of it. I told him how badly I needed this money, how hard it was to make a decent living while attending school, how I wasn't the type that needed a two-story house or designer clothes or a new Cadillac, that I drove around on my fucking bike. I was in the middle of a sentence babbling for my life in some way. I babbled on about my Facebook page weeks earlier when I heard creaking. The window opening wider. I can hear something else. Someone else climbing through, through the same window that I'd used. When I found the strength to twist my head to see what the psycho had in store for me, I was face to face with the girl in the pastel dress, the girl from the stalker pictures. He must have been sending her requests, too. Sorry, she said after being handed the gun, aiming it between my eyes and cocking it. I really need the money. Again, ghouls playing into the whole, um, people are worse than the paranormal thing for scary stories. Yeah, that's totally the case here. And I wish, I wish I could say I would be the better person and be like, wow, drop roadkill off at this random person's house mm, maybe not but seeing fucking 15 thousand or fifteen hundred dollars i'd be like mm, okay maybe i would do that because i am broke and i feel this poor 20 year old woman's struggles and i'm like uh i would probably do the same thing honestly i might i probably would draw the line at breaking into somebody's house just because i have a kid but like 
If I didn't have a kid, I probably would. <laughs> For all that money? Come on. I mean, you'd think about it like she did, but would you do it or would you not? Let me know in the comments. Would you do the things that this guy was telling you to do for all this money or would you not do it? Let me know. But as always, ghouls, the last video will be on the top left. The next video will be on the bottom left. All my social medias are on the screen as well as in the description box below. And remember, there's always someone or something watching you.